Tuesday mornings are the best and worst part of my week. I'm a neurologist specializing in movement disorders, and on Tuesday mornings I see patients with Parkinson's disease. It's really gratifying to work with these amazing patients and their families and help them on their journey, but many of them have incredible challenges to do basic things, eating, talking, or walking. I'm incredibly inspired and humbled to be part of their struggle. Often, with small adjustments, we can help. Here at the University of Iowa, our team has a range of options for Parkinson's disease, including working with providers across the hospital to do highly focused and targeted brain stimulation. One of the reasons Parkinson's patients are pioneers is that we know something about the brain circuits. We know that the neurotransmitter dopamine is dysfunctional in a part of the brain called the basal ganglia. This part of the brain is like a clutch for movement, and if there isn't enough dopamine, this clutch can stick. In the right patient, Dr. Greenlee can lower electrodes deep into the brain that allows us to release this clutch a bit and helps patients move and function much better. To find the right spot, patients have to be awake and have the unique opportunity to listen to the symphony of their own brain. Alright, cock your right wrist up and down. Good. Since up to 90% of Parkinson's patients will experience speech difficulties due to this disease, it is critical for us to understand why this happens and what we can do to help these patients and their families. We hope our cutting edge research protocols will answer some of these questions. I said Tuesdays are hard, particularly when I meet a patient whose Parkinson's disease has started to affect their thinking. For these patients, I have very few options, which is very frustrating. I have to sort of watch them fade away. There are a lot of diseases in neurology like this. Dementia is an example. In my Parkinson's patients, however, I think we can learn something about cognitive function and dysfunction because at least we know that they're missing dopamine. We study this using neural circuits in which we can manipulate dopamine and dopamine receptor expressing neurons using drugs, viruses, genetics, or something called optogenetics. With optogenetics, we can turn individual neurons on and off, including dopamine neurons, with laser light at very high time resolution. We are hoping to identify where cognitive information converges in the basal ganglia, the cognitive clutch, if you will. Right now, to treat dysfunctional brain circuits, doctors mostly prescribe cognitive rehabilitation or oral drugs. We hope to usher in an era where we can deliver highly individualized brain stimulation that can identify and rectify abnormal patterns of brain activity. This might be useful not only for Parkinson's disease, but for other human diseases that impair cognition.